instruments that we made many years ago and the, those that we make today will, will be going 50 and 75 years hence. This is our 125th anniversary. The innovation started with my grandfather in the 20s. Drum shells until that point were all single ply and very thick and very heavy. Uh, Grandpa developed a multi-ply drum shell that was lighter, stronger, stayed in round better, and today nearly every drum in the world is made that way. You think about the, you know, the guy who's getting that drum set, you want it to be their kit, the kit of their life, you know? I mean, a lot of people save a lot of money to buy our drums, and we want to make sure that they get something that is really deserving of that. We developed a wonderful recipe in the early 50s, and we've been faithful to the recipe ever since. We're making the same sauce, and it's just as good today because we're making it the same way with the same ingredients. And one of the ingredients is skilled people who care about what they're doing and care about every operation that goes into making a drum. Gretsch invented ply drum shells in 1927. That was a three-ply shell. We then, in a, somewhere in the mid-50s, we switched to a six-ply shell, and we've been using that same recipe ever since. First thing we do with the drum shell is we cut it to the proper depth, based upon the customer's order. The next thing Josh is going to do to this drum shell is treat the inside. First thing we do is we address the seam on the inside with wood filler. Then after that, he'll sand the inside using our balloon sander, which we've been using since the 70s. We sand the outside of the shell using a machine that started out originally at the Slingerland Niles plant back in the 50s. Uh, Mr. Gretsch acquired that machine in the 80s, and we've been using it ever since. It's a one-of-a-kind old relic of a machine, but we certainly love it. The first thing we do with the shell is we'll sand the outside with a belt sander using a 100-grit belt. After we do that, we switch to a 150 grit belt and sand it again. Then the final sanding is done with the 180 grit by hand. Our process is so old school and so every single drum is a unique instrument because it goes through everybody's hands. So I think Gretsch drums have a lot of soul in them and I think that every, you know, everybody that works here kind of puts that energy into each drum. The people making our drums now are, are long-termers and been with us five, six, ten years. And They like what they do and they're good at it. They're into it. All of our stains are applied by hand to the shell. We find that by rubbing the stain in, it allows the natural beauty of the wood to really come out later on in our process. First thing Juan is doing is she puts a wash coat on the shell. That's half stain and half reducer. After that, we continue with more coats of full strength stain. Some of the drums may take two or three coats, some may take as many as ten coats. It really depends on what's going on with the wood. The next thing Juan is going to do to this drum is start applying nitrocellulose lacquer to it. We use nitrocellulose lacquer because as the drum ages, it continues to harden and becomes a nice vintage mellow instrument. Most of the other drum makers do not use nitrocellulose and their drums don't age like ours. First we put a sealer coat on, then sand the drum, and come back and do a couple more coats of lacquer. We keep doing that until the drum's ready to go. We also heat our lacquer to 150 degrees. This allows us to spray the lacquer without any additives and gives us a nice solid coat of lacquer. Lorena is doing scuff sanding, which is our sanding between coats. She starts off using an orbital with 240 grit sandpaper on it. Then she goes back and does a hand sand with 400 grit. The purpose of doing this is to get the drum as smooth as possible so that the next coat of lacquer goes on evenly and smooth. It's a very intimate process and when you see the craftsmen working and building the drums it's, it's really about working with you know an organic material in the wood and and I, I do feel there is something you know when they when they're working on on the drums there's something very personal going on there. Once a drum is dried properly we move to the wet sanding process. What Lorraine is first doing is sealing the edge of the drum with wax to keep water and soap from getting into the plies. The next thing she'll do is we'll wet sand it using 500 grit paper, then we'll go back and wet sand it again using 1000 grit paper. We use a mixture of half water 
and half soap that we've been using for probably 30 or 40 years. Make, make sure we get the right consistency. After we're done in the wet sanding area, we bring the drums out to the drilling area. We drill them all on the same old machine we've been using since the 50s. This is the same machine that drilled Art Blakey's drum, Alvin Jones drums, uh, Vinnie Colaiuta's drums. So just about everybody's Gretsch drums in recent history have been drilled on this machine. Uh, we have to take a lot of good care of it. It's kind of a, a temperamental old machine, but we love it nonetheless. Those drums we were making in the 50s, hey, they're golden. They've aged very nicely like a fine wine. The instruments that we make today will be going 50 and 75 years hence. This is the router table that we cut all of our Gretsch bearing edges on. We also cut the snare bed on this table. It's been in the Gretsch family for years. It was in the Brooklyn factory. Then when Baldwin bought the company in 67, they used it, uh, Baldwin used it in Arkansas to cut guitar bodies on. And we got it back in the 80s and we've been using it ever since. After we cut our bearing edge, we bring it over to the drum sanding machine to sand, hand sand the edge. We hand sand a 1 32nd round over on the outside. We try to make the rest of the edge perfectly smooth. The quality of the edge directly relates to how well the drum will tune later on after it's assembled. Uh, we've used a 30 degree edge for quite some time, probably since the 60s or so, and that is definitely part of the Gretsch sound is, is the 30 degree edge. This is our buffing process. As you buff the drum, there's a couple things you really need to make sure that you do. First one is you have to heat the drum evenly across the surface of the drum to let the lacquer reactivate itself. The other thing you're doing is every time the drum hits, hits the wheel, you're scratching the drum. The idea is to buff it at different angles so the time you're done, you've diffused all the scratches out of the drum and you have the beautiful Gretsch finish. After the drum is buffed, we then put the badge on the drum. First step of that is bending the badge so you have a radius on it. We put the eyelid in the badge, line the badge up where it reads correctly, then we go to the badge press. Put a little wax on the anvil. There you go. Now the drum's ready for the assembly process. The last thing we do with the Gretsch drum is we put it in Barbara's hands. She puts the lugs on and any kind of hardware that goes on the drum. Then she heads the drum and puts it into relative pitch. After the drum's inspected, then we ship it off to the customer. People who play the instrument have discerning ears. There's a lot of choices out there, but there's only one Gretsch sound. Rich, warm, woody, I mean, it's a classic drum tone. I gotta think that it's, you know, for me, it is the classic drum tone. When you're hitting the drums, that, that sound uh, coming back at you and then going back out to the audience, that's what the great Gretsch sound really is. Our quality right now is, is better than it's ever been. A lot of time and effort goes into building a drum, and I think that you can tell the, tell the result just by the sound of it. The core values are family, innovation, and the, and the faithfulness to the recipe that's brought us to where we are today.